chapel. Yep. How would you teach in that space? Uh, we just had a chat about that. I would uh, I would get rid of the lectern uh, to remove any physical barriers between the speaker and the and the students. Um, and I would think about using the space. You can get about 15 feet out from the back uh, without losing line of sight to the front row of the balcony. So you've got about a 15 feet space by about 10 feet wide that you can move around in uh, to create engagement. Uh, I think about using visuals. Uh, if you can find an image uh, or a short video clip or something that, um, you know, avoid cheesy Christian art, but uh, something that's thought provoking and indirectly connected to what you're talking about so that the students' minds are going, wait a minute, why is that picture there? And are starting to figure out connections. Again, I'm looking for active cognitive engagement. Um, I think about how you can build some interaction in, even though you've got chairs that are bolted down in the upper balcony, right? So you students have to sit in rows. Um, something as simple as passing the piece every chapel and making sure that students understand what passing the piece means, right? That we we shake hands because with our right hand because it's our dagger hand, and so by shaking hands and, and wishing you the peace of Christ, I'm essentially promising not to attack you today. Right? I'm going to seek your well-being. I'm not going to call you names. I'm not going to right. I'm going to I'm going to work for your good. To invite students into the you know the historical meaning of the passing the peace part of liturgies. Uh, and to, again, if they, could, they can be consciously invited into what that means, 20 seconds of doing that every day, again, could set a norm. Um, or if there's a talk, you know, pause five minutes in and have 30 seconds for, turn and tell the person next to you one thing you just heard that you hadn't thought of before. Again, it's a way of, if students are anticipating that kind of interaction, it's a way of creating cognitive engagement um, and uh, having them looking out for, you know, things they can apply or things they might need to summarize. Uh, and it'll get them used to, to not zoning out while they're uh, while they're listening to the to the chapel presentation, so you yeah. mentioned liturgies. How important mm -hmm. are liturgies to you? Um, I think liturgies. You know, I mean, liturgies like everything. They can they can cut both ways. They can become they can become a satisfying thing, right? That you just go through the motions, etc. But if you can be kept engaged in in the intent of the liturgy, they're also a way of liturgies are meant to be a way of scripting the self, right? They're meant to give me a story to live in and to begin to discipline me in small ways to live in that story, right? To make me wish the person sitting next to me peace before I leave worship. Um, you know, to make me confess my sins at least every now and then, right? And to make me um, receive a blessing, right? And a commission uh, to be called to go out into the world. Uh, those to me are really important moments. And I think the, the, the repertoire that builds up through liturgy um, uh, I, I was part of a church for about 15 years where there was a simple practice at the end of the church service. We would always finish with a blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. And we'd be invited to just to stand and extend our hands. After 15 years of doing that, I, by the end of the service, I, was, I physically wanted my blessing, right? I was, uh, I just, it had just become, I just expected to receive a blessing at the end of the service to, to have God's face shine on me. And uh, again, just the simple act of being trained into doing that creates an expectancy. Um, similarly, we used to stand for the reading of, of the gospel. Um, again, it's just a very simple way of saying this is not the same as the reading of the bus timetable or the reading of Harry Potter, right? It's, uh, you know, this is, this is a different text and you, you stand to attention for it. So, um, you know, any of those are a, are a kind of, there's, there's an inherent risk in liturgy, right? That people are going to go through the motions and not inwardly commit to, to the, uh, you know, what's, what the intent is. But, and yet there's an invitation there to engage if it can be kept alive. Um, and, and again, that partly depends on who's leading the liturgy and whether they can find ways of bringing the meaning of it alive rather than just stepping on to the next, uh, the next step.